Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. This is Amanda Ludi with Amanda Ludi Arts and Enchantress Art Circle. How are you guys doing? Today we're going to do a stacked snowman, but it's going to be like a Halloween painting. Like, So we're going to have pumpkins stacked like snowmen, really spooky background. It's going to be really cool. So if you are brand new to painting, I will walk you through step by step. Um, I will go over all the supplies. I always have like tons of brushes and stuff handy. However, if you only have a few, um, this is what you're mainly going to use. A big flat brush, an angled flat brush with a pointed tip, a round brush, and like a little tiny like detail or liner brush. I would also use um, like some chalk, like chalkboard. Um, chalk that you would use in the classroom to draw. Um, if you're not comfortable freehanding, you could also use a pencil if you wish, but I find it easier to paint my background first and then go ahead and put on my design with chalk. So it's up to you what you prefer, but those are easier if you're a brand new beginner, especially with drawing. So we have a couple paint colors here if you don't have all the same colors, do not worry. Just use what you have. Um, but I like to use, for the most part, Deco Art and Golden seem to be like the brands I have. Occasionally, too, because um, I used to teach a lot of in person classes, I would get these Blick Rick acrylics. These are really good value for students. Um, I highly recommend them from dickblick.com if you want to buy in bulk. They're super, super nice. You can even get a quart. You could get um, a gallon. <laughs> There's so many different sizes you can use if you paint a lot. They are a great price. Um, but I have some orange here, primary yellow. Um, these golden paints, they are a lot more expensive. But the color, like the pigment, is just... Oh my goodness, beautiful. You can tell, honestly, you can tell a difference between like my paintings where I use um, like the Blick Rick colors sometimes. You can tell the difference between these. Um, for example, I did this winter painting and yeah, it's super pretty especially like with all of the glitter and stuff, but the colors are a lot duller. Once I varnish it, the colors will come back, but I find with the more expensive paints, the difference is just the color. It's just a lot brighter, but for bang for your buck, I love deco art. Look how gorgeous that color is. So enough about paint, I could talk about that all day, but have a variety of blues. Um, that's gonna be our main background. I have true blue, a turquoise. I have a metallic paint, which are really cool if you wanna add some shine to your painting. Um, then I have just a brown here. Let's see what color that is, burnt umber. Mars black, titanium white. And I think that's that's all of them. So you can change it up if you wish, but this is what I'm using. I have styrofoam plates on hand, a pickle jar for a rinsing cup, and we are ready to dive in. So I um, I'm gonna actually wash off my hand. I forgot I left <laughs> one, my little cheat sheet for Italian. I've been trying to learn Italian on the side. Um, and some of the words every day I write on my hand so I remember. <laughs> and I'm like, oh darn, I have that here. So I'm gonna wash it off real quick and then let's get started. Okay, let's dive in. So I'm gonna start off by using my big flat brush here. And we're gonna do the background color. So I'm gonna go from a dark, dark blue down to a light turquoise blue, and then end with my um, ground on the bottom for the pumpkin to go on. So before I get started on doing the pumpkins, I'm gonna mix my colors for the background. I'm gonna use a little bit of black, and I just pull the color off to the side of my plate here. And I'm going to take a big gob of this dark blue and mix it in. So this is going to be my first color. If you want, you can paint the sides as you go. 
So you kind of have like a stretched canvas wrap around look, or I just wait till the very end and paint everything black. Or you could get a frame. And this is a standard size. I'm using an eight by 10. So if you want to frame your canvases, this is an easy frame size to find. Now these are acrylics. They dry very quickly. And as I'm going here, if I happen to pull up and off mid stroke, you'll get these little lines. If it happens just lightly, very lightly touching the canvas, drag it from one end to the other and it will smooth out. So we gotta work kind of quickly here. I'm just going through um, my blues. I'm gonna get lighter and lighter as I go down. So I'm just gonna pull a gob of that blue. And this one is my true blue, Americana paint from Deco Art. And I'm gonna go back and forth and back and forth. Now sometimes if you go in a motion like a figure eight, Yes, it will pull down that dark color we use, but look how nice the transition looks. You don't get those stripes from color to color to color. It just pulls in very nicely. And you can always go back, if you pull too much black in, go back into just the blue, put that in, and do your figure eight motion very lightly farther you pull it down, the more of that darker color will come this way. So just keep on going. I'm going to add some more of this light blue. Now if I'm going too fast at any time, go ahead and pause. But you got to work kind of quickly when you're blending because if it dries, it's going to be so much harder for you to match colors. So just kind of make sure everything is the way you want it before you move on. I'm very happy with how this is looking. So to transition into lighter colors, you might need to rinse off the dark. So I'm gonna rinse off my brush. Sometimes if you push your brush towards the bottom, it will help get that extra paint color off as it's stubborn. The black likes to stay on your brush. So just go ahead and try to get it off as best as you can. And now we're gonna go to the lighter color. So I have this turquoise color. Now they have turquoise in basically any brand. Apple Barrel, Deco Art. I'm using the golden because I love golden paints. But if you're just practicing at home, um, you do not need to go out and spend a fortune on paints. There are so many other colors of turquoise out there that look just as good. So now I'm doing that figure eight motion, pulling some of that blue into this turquoise until I get a nice smooth transition. I'm doing the figure eight and then I'm going back and forth very lightly, making sure that it's nice and smooth and how I want it. And then I'm gonna go back into my turquoise and put that in. And you wanna make sure it goes all the way on your sides. And we're just about done. Remember, we're gonna leave some room for your ground, for your snowman pumpkin guy. I'm gonna go lighter now. So I'm just gonna take my dirty brush and I'm gonna take some of this white and I'm gonna go right underneath here and pull it up into the color just a little bit. And the more you go back and forth, back and forth, it'll all start to fade together. And grab a little bit more white. Now, see how there's that harsh line here? I want to rinse my brush clean. And then with my clean brush, 
do my figure eight motion where those two colors meet and see how they smooth out. Now the higher you go up with the white, it's gonna really lighten everything. So just kind of be mindful. If you have to rinse your brush a couple of times, that's okay. Just make sure you get a lot of that extra water off your brush because you don't wanna thin the paint that's on the canvas because it will start to separate and then you'll be left with like a bare spot. So this is pretty good. I'm pretty happy with how it looks. So I'm gonna leave well enough alone there is a couple colors that I did not use that I will probably use now, and those are metallics. Now that is optional. Um, it's Deco Art. They have, let me see where I put mine. They have these um, shiny colored metallic paints that go over top, or you can mix them into your color. But it makes this really beautiful shine. So here it is. So the looks like this. This one's ice blue. I also have a green that I'm doing, but you can just take a little bit of that if you want this to be a little shiny and you can mix it in. I probably, I'm going to just do a little bit. I don't want it too overpowering because I really like how my background looks, but this is something optional that you can put in. Make sure you're wetting your brush from time to time. There. Okay, so I'm gonna leave this like this and I'm gonna ground the painting. So what I'm gonna do is take a little bit of black, that same color we used up top, a little bit of blue. And I'm gonna come down here. This doesn't have to be a perfectly straight line. But I'm going to fill this in on the bottom. Using that same brush. Just making sure that all my canvas is colored. Right now we should have no bare spots. So I'm gonna go a little bit more black. It's a little too blue. There we go. I'm gonna get my ground in here. Okay. If you have a little bit of like lighter blue showing in some spots, doesn't have to be one solid color. And I'm coming up just about an inch and a half, maybe two inches. It depends on on you and what canvas size you're using, how high you want to come up with it. But I think about right here should be should be pretty good for me. All right, so I am done using this big brush probably for the whole rest of the painting. Um, so you can. Clean it, put it aside, leave it in your bucket for now. And we're going to start to do our background that's going to be behind the pumpkins. We are not ready to do the pumpkins yet. So I'm going to do some trees. I want to do some cool, spooky trees. So what I'm going to do is take my round brush and I'm just going to do black paint. Again, kind of like this color with a little bit of blue in it and we're gonna start doing trees. Now, the smaller the trees are, the lighter they are, those will be the trees in the distance. The closer to you the trees appear, they'll be a little bit darker and a little bit wider and probably come off the top of the canvas. So keep all those tricks in mind when you're doing this. So it looks like you have depth into your painting. So I like to start off with the lighter background colors first. And I'm gonna do that by maybe mixing a little bit of white into that um, teal color as well. So it'd be blue, black. I might need a little more teal. There you go. Just a little more white so you get a nice 
dull background color that just fades into your distance but still shows up where you can tell what it is. Now, when you do trees, your trunk is gonna be the thicker part and as you go up, you're gonna lightly press so your brush stroke gets thinner. And you can do however many you want, but I'm gonna start right here. I'm gonna make my thickness. And I'm just starting right on top of my black round we just did. Now I'm gonna occasionally wet my brush. The smaller your brushes go, you're gonna wanna keep re-watering and replenishing paint so you have a nice, easy to work with brush. And this part is tricky because you don't wanna push too, too hard. If you have a mistake where you make a branch up here really thick, you can always just come down here and re-thicken this or hurry up and wipe it off um, and then you can just repaint it over. Don't push too hard, don't use a lot of water. Like a baby wipe consistency is perfect. I like using baby wipes to wipe off any boo-boos. But um, if you plan on wiping off anything, um, make sure your background is dry. So I would wait a minute before you do this part. And your branches, I'm not going to add too many. It's a little bit. Now, if at any time when you're painting and you think, oh, that might be a little too, a little too light, you can always go back into one of your darker blues and brush some of that in there. Sometimes the more different shades of blue, the more realistic your painting is gonna look. It won't look so cartoonish with all the different colors. You can even put some darker spots by mixing a little bit of black into your blue and putting that on there. If you look outside at a tree, you'll see shadows, you'll see highlights. So it does not have to be all the same. So for example, I'll put a little bit of black into this, brush it in here or there. And it kind of looks a little bit better, doesn't it? With all those different shades of blue. So don't be afraid to play around with it and change things up. Another thing too that I would recommend is with trees, don't worry about making them like all perfectly straight. Some branches, they curve, they bend, they break. Whoops, I just flung some glitter on my, <laughs> oh no, it's stuck on there. I'll get that off in a second. Um, but they're all different and sometimes they overlap one another. Now right here I got a little bit thick, so I'm gonna thicken this up. Maybe I'll cover up my glitter spot, I'll just put some paint over it. There we go. Remember, the farther out your branches reach, the thinner your brush joke is going to get. I make a bad habit of resting my hand on my canvas. <laughs> if you do that, just make sure it's dry because mine is not and sometimes it pulls the paint off. So just be careful. So just making these random lines. Now, if you have a hard time with the round brush um, which I often do once I get to the teeny, teeny, tiny little branches. Just go through your bucket of assorted brushes. Find one with a teeny, teeny, teeny tip on the brush. And again, you're going to have to keep re-wetting your brush after like every stroke. But just push real lightly and you can pull some little teeny tiny brush strokes by pushing really lightly. So let me see if you guys can see that. I'm gonna zoom in 
And just kind of think of like the letter Y. So here I did one there, looks like the letter Y. If you want to put leaves on this, um, you wouldn't have to get as detailed with the branches because you could just poke on um, some leaves overlapping some branches. Takes a little bit of time, but the details are, are really worth it. Really makes the painting. So I'm coming up off the edge on some of these, make it a nice tall tree. And I'm just about done. I think I'm gonna start another another tree here. Maybe I'll come up here with a with a branch. I just wing it. If you want to, you can like Google a tree and kind of get a good picture of how they look, but I just use my imagination and just kind of go with it. I don't really give my trees a whole lot of thought. Now that's pretty light. I'm going to darken that a little bit. And I think I'm pretty happy with it. If I want to give it some highlight, I'll add a little more light to my color. Maybe just on certain parts. It's a little too dark. I mean a little too light. But I'll go in and add a little bit of brighter color where I think it's needed. This is kind of bare here. I'll add another branch. There we go. Now it's kind of a lot going on up here for having such a small trunk so I'm going to thicken this up a little bit. And that's a little more appropriate for that. And then I'm going to add some shadow to the trunk. There we go. Little highlights. A little bit of white. And I'm just going to Take a step back, look at it, and I think, I think I'm happy with it. Now from putting my hand into the paint, you can see it on my table, I have a smudge here, so I'm gonna add a tree there. And I'm just gonna cover over my mistake. And put one there. Now, because it's like right off the edge of the canvas, I'm not going to get too crazy detailed. But remember, the closer to you, the bigger the tree and the less branches you'll likely see because they'll probably go off the top of your canvas. So keep that in mind. Like the darker colors are going to start going. Um a little bit thicker and a little bit taller. I'm gonna do a couple more of those turquoise trees like this. Um, maybe I'll do a little skinny one right here. Again, re-wet your brush. I'm gonna zoom out. Forgot I had you guys zoomed in. Thicken this up a little bit. There. I'm going to add a little bit more teal in my plant. Do a little more of these. And 
these colors look really cool. And you can overlap your trees. So I'm gonna come over here and put some over there. Like that. And again, I'm gonna re-rinse my brush. Now I'll probably speed myself up here. You kind of get the gifs of it. I'm gonna do a couple little more um, smaller details with the tree, a few more in the background, and then we'll start to work on doing those bigger trees next. Okay, so we have our darker trees, we have our lighter trees, we are ready to start adding some detail. So this is where I want to do some really cool pumpkins stacked on top of each other, and then we'll go ahead and add some further detail. So before we get started, you're going to want to make sure your background is dry. Oftentimes, I will just kind of let it sit for a little bit go fold some laundry or something, um, go have a cup of coffee, um, and then in about five to 10 minutes, it's dry. If you wanna speed things up, you can also get a hair dryer and hold it a couple inches away, and that will like only be about two minutes until it's dry. Acrylics dry very fast. Just depends how much paint you used. But I didn't use a lot of paint, so it will dry within minutes. So what we're gonna do is, um, kind of look and see if it's still shiny. If you look right here, that's really wet. It has some shine. So once it's more of a matte color, you're good to go. That's when you can use your chalk. You could do pencil. I highly recommend you don't do pencil only because it's super a pain to erase if you make a mistake. Whereas chalk, if you have white chalk, you can draw something on. If you don't like it, just damp your finger or cloth, wipe it off. It's so easy. So one thing to keep in mind, keep handy is chalk. I'm just going to be going and freehanding mine um, with my paint, but for you guys, I highly recommend the chalk. So let's make sure this is dry and then we'll come back and start doing our awesome pumpkins. Okay, you guys, so we are ready to move on and we're going to get started. So grab your chalk or your paint, whichever you feel most comfortable using, and let's get started. So I'm going to just go ahead and get my brown brush and paint this on. However, if you would rather use chalk, highly recommend it. But I'm going to grab some clean white paint here. Even though our pumpkin is going to be really dark, I'm just doing this in white so you can see it easily when you sketch yours on. So I'm going to start off with the bottom first. I'm gonna figure out where I'm gonna put my um, pumpkin. It's gonna be about right here, and you can decide how big or small you want him. I want him fair, like a fairly decent size, so he looks like he's like right in the front, and the main attention is on him or her. And then we're just gonna make this little pumpkin shape. It's not gonna be perfect. Pumpkins can be a little lopsided, <laughs> have little warts on them or whatever you would call it. Um, I'm just gonna make sure it looks like it would be sitting flat on the ground though so it doesn't fall over. So I am gonna make the bottom a little bit flat here. Now, typically with snowmen, the bottoms always 
the biggest, so keep that in mind. And then we'll add two more pumpkins stacked on top. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do the outline for now. And I'm gonna go and do another one. Fairly big, but noticeably smaller. And I put a little divot up at the top. I don't make it perfectly round. Now, as I look at this, this definitely needs to be a little wider over here. You can make adjustments as you go, just so it looks proportioned correctly. And then I'm gonna go and do the head. I'm gonna make my head big enough so I can put some noticeably cool details on the face. And then this is up to you. If you wanna do like a winter's hat, you could, like the black top hat. However, I wanna do a witch hat. So when you do a hat, don't put it flat, like directly on the top. You wanna actually overlap your head so it looks like it's placed onto the head. And then you can make your, your detail how you wish. I've taught some really cute snowman classes and people have done all kinds of cool things. One even did a cowboy hat, it was kind of cool. So now I'm going like this, kind of like a triangle shape here on the top. I'm gonna round it out here and kind of have it like falling over to this side, drooping a little bit. All right, so now that we have this, go ahead and pause me. You can try to do this as best as you can. If you're not comfortable, you can always literally just like print out a picture of a snowman or this exact picture, print it out and use transfer paper or something. It's so much easier. Um, sometimes if I'm doing duplicates, like sometimes I'll get custom paintings where a whole family member wants the same exact picture. I'll take transfer paper and literally just take my sketch that I do. For example, I did this one like on the back of a piece of paper I had and I will lay the transfer paper underneath and then trace it each time I put it on a different canvas and I'll have my same drawing. So lots of different things you can do if you are not comfortable with sketching. So the next thing I am going to do, um, we can worry about the facial features in a little bit, but I'm going to start doing the fun part, my awesome pumpkin colors. I'm gonna use the same brush and kind of keep in mind, um, some areas are gonna be a little bit darker, like a shadow. So like, for example, right here, there's a big cluster of branches. So maybe I'll make it a little darker. Um, maybe it looks like somebody's shining a flashlight directly on them and his front here would be lit up. But then like some of the features way would be darker there's just all kinds of things like you could keep in mind if you happen to put like a moon or something back here then your light source would be over here so then this side would be lit up and that would be a little bit darker so those are things to keep in mind when you want to make it look realistic so I have my brush if you're ready to move on go ahead and follow along with me or pause me to get caught up but I have burnt umber I am using Orange Flame from Deco Art Americana. I have, this is also Deco Art, but I absolutely love their premium paint because it gets super bright. I love it. Um, for example, here's the primary yellow in their um, Americana acrylic paint. Gorgeous color, but I like this. A lot better it's a lot brighter and they have different shades too um, that you can do here's another one um, it's just it's beautiful I love the pigment so I'm gonna use that yellow and then the red is also deco art I'm using true red and then black you're gonna want to replenish your black paint and I'm using carbon black or you could use Mars black. There we go. Now we're ready. We're ready to get started. So what I'm going to do is I'm going 
to take some orange and mix some brown, a little more orange. So you get a dark burnt orange. Now pumpkins, they generally have like, you know, the curve to them to make them 3D. I want you to keep that in mind with your brush strokes and curve it. And then we're gonna keep adding different colors, of orange and yellow. But for right now, let's just do a couple like this, okay? And then I'm gonna come up top here And a good example about when you do highlights and shadows is these pumpkins are stacked on top of each other. So up here, right where this pumpkin touches this one, this would be a little bit darker. So once we go into our other colors, same with like where your hat is, that would be a little bit of a shadow as well. So let me go ahead and put a little bit more up here. All right, so right now it kind of looks a little bit weird, <laughs> but that's okay. This is showing you the motion of your stripes. Now I'm just gonna keep using a dirty brush and we're gonna get a little bit darker. So I'm gonna take a little bit of black. Don't overdo the black, it's hard to take it away. It's easier to just add more in as you need it, but we're making a darker brown. And I'm going to down on the bottom here, I'm going to start swooshing in and see how I'm kind of layering like on top. And again, you're using a little brush, so keep reapplying your water and paint. But I'm going to brush this right over top. I'm not even worried about covering any of the paint I just used up. And when you work fast, they blend in with each other. It just makes a really nice, smooth transition. So I'm gonna take this color, especially up towards the top here, and really give that a little bit of extra dark. Right where, up here, you don't wanna make it come down too far just enough where it's noticeably like a shadow. If you get it too dark, you can always go back into your orange and, and go on top of it and give it some highlight, but that's the gyps of it. Now what I'm gonna do is just darken up here a little bit. And I gotta add a little bit more black. Remember, it's easier to add it in than to take it away. I'm gonna go all the way to my edge here of my pumpkin. I don't wanna miss any spots. There we go. There's a lot of trees right here and on the sides. I'm gonna darken up those edges. There we go. And this too, I'm gonna to add a little bit more black over here. I like starting out with the with the darker shadows before I do the highlights. Now, I'm gonna just kind of randomly go back into my other colors here. I'm gonna go into my orange, and I'm gonna start adding just a couple stripes, just to kind of start filling in those gaps. And we will not be done even then, but this is just gonna help us kind of visualize our pumpkin see what else it needs. So I'm just kind of going around, keeping those same strokes. And you just gotta play with it until you are happy with it. it. Takes a lot of patience to paint. It's a lot of layers upon layers, but it's totally worth it in the end, I promise. So the more you go over, your paint on your canvas, you'll start to see it all kind of blends in with each other 
Um, the more you do that dough, the more it will just turn into one color. So you gotta occasionally just kind of take a step back, maybe um, work on a different pumpkin that was way too orange. So I'm gonna put more of that on top. But you can start to see, you know, how you could get a little carried away with these colors. Sometimes you gotta wait for it to dry and then go on top of it. Now, right now, this is pretty dark. I'm gonna get lighter and lighter as I go. But right now, my main focus is just making sure that everything is filling in so I don't see any more of the blue. There we go. Eventually, I'll add some more stripes back in. I know I kind of lost it all right here. Those stripes are nice because they're like those little divots in your pumpkin. I'm going to add some more light orange as I go. Me starting to look cute. He looks a little three-dimensional now. We'll also add a little bit of white for some highlight, which will help it look a little more round. And so right now, making sure everything is filled in. I don't want to see any of that blue, like right here, this part needs filled in. There we go. I'm gonna round this part out a little bit on the bottom. Perfect. Now I'm gonna start to get a little more detailed. I'm gonna take some black and on the bottom here, I'm really gonna get heavy with this dark color. Make sure if it's too black, you rinse your brush and then just kind of soften it into your pumpkin here. There we go. Rinse out all that black. It's like clean brush, just kind of fade it in a little bit. There we go. Maybe I'll take a little bit of bright orange now. Give it some highlights. Remember to stick with that motion where you're curving your brush strokes. In the middle, it's a little more straight on, but it's definitely more noticeably curved towards the bottom. Now I'm not gonna get too, too bright, you guys, with the actual pumpkin, um, especially on the head. And the reason being is because I'm gonna have the facial features that are extremely bright. So I wanna make sure like this is noticeably darker. I'm just gonna add a little more shadow up here. It literally takes a, a little while just to get it just right. So just be patient, play around with it. You could even add a little bit of red if you want, give it a little something extra. And some little tints of red for a little more color. And I'm just slightly brushing it on just to kind of make it pop a little bit more. Really like that, that looks nice. I'm gonna do a little bit more of just the regular yellow and orange. I'm gonna take just a little bit and mix it in. And then I'll kind of brighten it up in some areas. And you don't want your pumpkin too stripy, so sometimes you gotta kinda Go over everything with your brush and just kind of smooth it out. 
and I'm working fast because I don't want it to dry. Really trying to make it dark on the bottom there because all that shadow from those pumpkins. That's probably the trickiest part is just rinsing out all your black and then with a clean brush just trying to neatly like fade it in. there that's starting to look a lot better so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start to work on my other details if you're still trying to get that to look good um, go ahead and pause me we're still not done with it I'm gonna add more details some white highlights some more yellows in a moment but for right now I'm gonna go and sketch on my extra little details so my hat I'm gonna put that on I'm gonna make it black okay so I have my hat sketched on that's just the black part now I'm gonna start to add some detail so we're gonna do detail in the hat we're gonna sketch out our eyes then I'm gonna add some highlights here to the pumpkin just because he's a little bit dull right now but that's okay we're gonna brighten them up so first thing I'm gonna do is let's go ahead and do the eyes first of the pumpkin I'm using my little detail brush and I'm gonna take some yellow and I'm just gonna, you can use your chalk if you feel more comfortable. However, depending on the size of your canvas, it's a little small to work with for chalk. But they're kind of like a triangle. And then I'm gonna kind of round out the edge and then come together like that. And then try to make it symmetrical if you can on the other side. So we got his eyes. Now his eyes, I'm not going to leave them just yellow. I am going to put some other colors in there to make it look like it's hollowed out and there might be a, a light inside. So I'm going to rinse this off. I got a little bit of red in there. I'm going to take my bright orange and on the inside I'm going to dab a little bit of orange. Take a little more yellow. And I'm staying within those lines I just did. I'm going to take a little bit of red. Dab some red in here. And then I'm going to rinse my brush and then just kind of blend all those three colors together. Okay. Same with the nose, and you can do a totally different design if you want to. But I'm going to do like two little nostrils. I think that would be cute. They're just kind of symmetrical as well, but she can get it. And then I'm going to go ahead and do my mouth. And I'm pushing super, super lightly because it is hard to work with this little brush. But you can do whatever design that you want. And sometimes you gotta go back over it with all the other colors just to get it the way you want. There, I'm just more worried about the shape of it at the moment, how I want it to look. There, I think that's pretty cool. Like, for example, once this dries, I'll probably go in add a little bit more yellow. Just till I get it the way I want it. There, you look, he looks cool. And then I'll probably take a little more yellow. Give it a little more highlight. 
It's a little dark. There we go. He looks cool. Maybe just a little more once this dries. I'll sharpen it up a little bit and make it less messy. There we go. Now I'm going to take my brush. I'm going to go ahead and rinse this out. And I'm going to add some detail to my hat. And all I'm going to do is just take a little bit of white and orange mixed together. And I'm going to water it down with a little water. And I'm just going to, on one part of it, just kind of give it a little bit of a highlight. So it sticks out from the background. Now this is really white. I'm going to have like some little creases in the hat. So it looks like it's on his head. See how, how bright that is? It still looks cute, but you could take your clean brush, fade in a little bit, or go back into your black. And just kind of do it again until you get it the right color you want. I'm just going to take a little pinch. There we go. It was a little too white for my liking before. But I'm adding like little, little lines to look like creases in the hat. And I kind of round them out to like go with the hat. There we go. They don't want it just solid black. You could put a little yellow into this color to kind of make it look like it's glowing. And there, that looks cute. And I just kind of go back and forth between my colors till I get it exactly like the way I want it to look. I'm gonna have it a little darker on this side just so it looks a little more three-dimensional. And I'm curving kind of like I did with the pumpkin. See how my brush strokes are a little curved? And this is a little bit too... There we go, needed a little extra point there. It was a little too flat. Under here, add a little more black. And perfect. So now he's got a nice 3D shaped hat. So this is the fun part. I'm gonna go ahead, rinse my brush, and just kind of like how we did the eyes, I'm gonna take a little bit of yellow and I'm gonna add some little extra details to my pumpkin. Now, if you water it down, like your yellow, for example, that's a good way to start if you're not comfortable doing highlights. This will give it a little bit of a glow just so you can see the difference and it's not too scary. I just kind of watered down a little bit of yellow and I continue with those same strokes with the curved look and you don't want to cover the whole thing. I'm just doing it so it kind of looks like those divots you see in the pumpkin and they're going to go all the way from the top down to the bottom. If you make it too yellow, you can go ahead and get a baby wipe, smear it off. But just kind of play around with it. When you shear it down with the water, you can still kind of see the dark color underneath. That's what I like to kind of start out that way. And then I'll do the same with the orange and just play around with it. I just thought it looked good before, but I want it to be just a little bit brighter. Just make sure, you know, you're keeping that darkness, like right here. I'm gonna go back and make this a little bit darker. And this contrast will really help achieve the look you're looking for with these highlights. And like same down here, make that a little bit darker. Just make sure you keep going with those strokes. There we go. 
I'll add some more. I'm gonna brighten them up a little bit more. And it's just about playing around with it until you're satisfied. Now remember when we talked about the grooves in the pumpkin, like pumpkins have those little divots in them? Once you get all your highlights on, you can go back and put those little divots in and you could just use it with your black and orange mixed together or you can do your burnt umber and orange mixed together and I'll show you how to do that in just a moment. I'm just lighting him up a smidge in some spots. It just takes a lot of layer upon layer upon layer. So the dark rings is like you just take a little brown and then do those curves again. So it looks like there's those little divots in the pumpkin. If they don't show up, I just take a little bit more black, but that goes from the front down. You don't want it too, too noticeable, but you do want it just a little bit, a little bit darker. More different shades the, the merrier so just play around with it until you get it the way you want it just remember the more you go over something and over something it will all just fade into one color I think the more shades the more realistic so go ahead take your time go back and forth between the yellows the oranges the darker shades see how how much brighter that is I don't want to do that all over my pumpkin, but some spots it's going to look really cool to have those highlights. So I'm just going to add some random highlights here and there. Once it dries a little bit, then maybe I'll go back in and do a little bit more. You can even add a little bit of white to your color to give them a little extra highlight. There, he looks pretty cool now. I'm just kind of smoothing him out so he doesn't look Super blotchy, I want to keep the curvature of my, my pumpkin. Down here, I'm going to add a little bit of orange to the bottom, just a smidge. There we go. And just keep on playing with it. So you get the highlights that you want. Okay, I have all of my highlights in. Put a little bit of red, a little bit more black, just to give it some contrast underneath. Just kind of crispened up those lines a little bit. And then a little bit of that yellow. And that is perfect. And then once this dries, I did add a little bit of black. So now it's time for the fun details of the painting. I thought it'd be cool to kind of make him like a caretaker of maybe like a cemetery or something. So I'm gonna do with my little tiny brush, I'm gonna take black and blue, mostly black, and mix it in a little bit of blue. And I'm gonna do like a fence behind him. And it's just gonna be like a little wobbly fence. I did this little sketch here and decided to put like a little fence in the background. So it's gonna tuck behind him. So what you're gonna do is just kind of pick how high up you want your fence. Put your line in there. There's gonna be another line that kind of mimics what you just did underneath. 
like that. I'm gonna do another one that meets up with it. Remember, it's tucked behind them. You don't wanna go in front of them. And you can make it zigzagged if you wish. I'm just pushing real lightly. And this kind of adds a little extra detail and brings him to the front of the painting a little bit better. There we go. Now what I'm gonna do are add the little gates. And that's gonna basically be like a little triangle top. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then as best as you can, make sure you re-wet your brush, replenish your paint. And as best as you can with a steady hand, go ahead and put in your little, little fence here. This is really tricky because you have to keep wetting your brush and making sure you know your lines are nice, not perfectly straight, but straight enough. It's a creepy painting, so if you make it crooked, it's gonna work to your advantage. So don't be too hard on yourself if it's not perfect. This is one of those things, if you wanna sketch it on with your chalk, you can go ahead. Now this is just overlapping my trees here, so it looks like some are behind it. And I'm gonna go the whole way over. Wherever you think that that fence post would be, go ahead and paint it in. Do one here. The harder you push, the thicker your line, so be very careful. I know it's easier said than done. And my posts are not all the same height. I'm not getting too particular about that but I am trying to make them all like the same thickness like here I went a little bit heavy but that's okay it might just be me but it really kind of made the eyes of this glow it looks really good. The black really makes those eyes glow. So just about done. And I'm put one here. It's overlapping the tree. That's all right. If it fades into your tree, it's not a big problem. There we go. And maybe do one more. Oops, I added a little too much blue. There we go. This one's tricky because it's right on the edge of the canvas. Make it a little pointier up top. Perfect. Make this one a little bit pointier. And there we go. That looks really cool. So we have our gate background. The next thing is decide what you want to do next. So I'm thinking I'm going to have him hold a lantern and a broom on one side. And so what I'm going to do is I would highly recommend that you sketch it out with your chalk. But I'm going to mix white, and a lot more white, white, yellow, and brown together to make my broomstick. There we go. Perfect. And what I'm going to do is kind of have it lay off 
to his side. You could have it overlap him, but just kind of take your pick like where you want it placed and then we'll start to put it on there. I like to have crooked brooms. I don't like them perfect. You can have the broom like facing up. You can have it facing down. I'm gonna have the bristles facing up for something different, but I'm just gonna come here. I'm not gonna push very hard. And I'm gonna go ahead and make my broom stick. And I'm gonna give it on this side, on the left, some black. So this way it looks three dimensional. And then I'm gonna take a little bit more white, mix it into my color, and then on the right, so it looks like the light from inside the jack-o'-lantern is lighting it up. I'm gonna add some white. There we go. Perfect. Now for your bristles, I'm gonna add a little more yellow. Oh, this looks kind of green, maybe a little more brown. So brown, yellow, white, until you get the color you want. And what you're gonna do is just very, very lightly with your little, little, teeny, tiny brush, barely push on it, you're gonna go and add, oh my gosh, this is so tricky. I'm gonna erase some of this paint off of my brush, just too much. You really wanna make sure it is, very thin. I'm gonna water this down a little bit, make it easier. And I'm just gonna push super, super lightly to get those little bristle lines. You really have to have a steady hand with this part. And I just overlap it with this color. I'll go in, add some brown on the bottom, help fill it in. I'm gonna add a little black in there, especially towards the left and on the bottom. Make sure you're wetting your brush and grabbing more paint. And push in super lightly. I'm gonna go back into my lighter bristle color. Make sure you don't have tons of paint caked on. And I'm just going to make this a little bit longer. Just take your time. Add a little bit more black. And I just kind of keep overlapping it until it is the way I want. You don't want any sick lines. So if I have to go back like right here, put a lighter line in, maybe a little bit more white highlight over here on the right side. Perfect. A little more brown. Remember, the more different shades of color, the better. I'm gonna add a little bit more yellow. It's too much paint, so I'm gonna twist it off on my plate. There we go. And if your lighter colors aren't sticking, wait for it to dry a minute, and then you could go back in and put it on. I'm just pushing super lightly. If you make something too bright, you can dim it down with some darker paint. Add a little more black. And 
and I'm happy with that. I think I'm gonna leave it as it is. I'm just gonna straighten this part out a little bit. Got a little crooked. It's a little bit of a short broom. Uh, you can make it taller if you want, but I'm trying not to get too picky with it because sometimes I tend to overdo things and then I wanna kick myself for messing with it. A little bit more black, I think I need. There we go. Perfect. I think that's I think that's good. So please pause me, take your time on this part. I know this part is a little bit tricky just because the bristles are so small. So just make sure you have a little teeny tiny brush for this part and you should be good to go. See, I, I messed with it too much. Now I gotta go back in and put some more black on the bottom. But just take your time and I promise eventually it will come out. <laughs> okay, so next thing we're gonna do is the hands. So my hands on my um, pumpkin here, I'm just gonna do like a little, little comma mark here. Have it come down and wrap around and make like little, little hands here. Like he's holding on to that broom. Perfect. And then the other hand, I'm going to have it another comma and I'm going to pull out like this. And I'm gonna put like a little lantern here. Okay, so we are gonna continue using our little detailed brush. And we just put the arm in about halfway because what I'm gonna do next is sketch on my lantern. So I'm gonna take a little bit of white for right now. And my lantern's gonna start off, I'm gonna make sure for one thing that my brush is nice and thin. I don't want a ton of paint on it. I'm gonna come up with a little triangle. Okay. And then I'm gonna come right below the triangle and slightly round out the side and then do like a smiley face shape gonna make it a little bit three-dimensional then I'm gonna come in come in a little skinnier and then round off the bottom with another smiley face so there's our lantern shape now my lantern I'm gonna have the inside we're gonna glow this all with a yellow Maybe a little bit of orange. A little bit of red. And then I rinse this and go back into my yellow. Fill it in. So it kind of looks like a flame. Then, last but not least, you're going to take black. And again, I'm going to switch brushes here. So I have a nice pointed tip. I'm going to make sure it's nice and thin. I'm going to take my black. And I'm going to put these little details in. I'm going to outline what we just did. If you see a little bit of white through, that's totally fine. It'll just look like a highlight, which is good. I'm gonna make this a little thicker up here, this black part. And then lanterns, they usually have those little lines that go down right through the middle. I'm gonna add those real quick. This part, you don't wanna push very hard at all. So just be careful 
nice and slow. And then I'll just thicken up the bottom a little bit. And there I have my lantern, so it looks pretty good. And you could put your hand in there for your little branch hand. You can put like a little round handle on the top. And there we go. So I'm going to zoom in. And you can see the little detail there. And then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to add some grass and things down on the bottom and a little bit of glow. So I'm going to take my round brush. I'm going to take just some plain yellow. I'm not going to mix anything into it. And I'm just going to put from the light. And you're not going to make this too big because it's pretty high off the ground. The tea lights up here and in here. But I am going to come down here and add a little bit of just yellow and rub it in. And I thought it would be kind of cool to like have a cemetery or you could do like other pumpkins. If you add too much yellow, by the way, just go over it with a little bit of black and it will fade in. You can even put just a smidge of orange down below too. So I just don't want it pure black. That's boring. We want a little color, like some leaves have fallen. Um, you could do for that effect, you could do little splotches like this of color of not too bright because it's dark. Um, you can do brown, get all this pretty colors. As you go towards the back, you make your strokes a lot lighter. Towards the front, you make them heavier so they're fuller. And then doesn't that kind of look like there's some leaves. I think it's really pretty. You could even do pumpkins. You could do anything you wish. I thought it'd be cute to have a couple little pumpkins kind of off in the corner, like towards you. Like a suggestion of pumpkins. You don't have to get as detailed. I'm just gonna do like one off in the corner here. Big pumpkin. Some pumpkins even have a little green still on them, so you could get as detailed as you want. I'm going to do maybe like a, a little one here. I'm going to add some black on the bottom. And the nice thing about this is if you do it and you don't like it, you could just paint black right over top of it and just say, nope, didn't work out. Or try it again. I'm just going to take a little more orange here. I'm going to add some pretty thick shadows to this. I don't want it to stand out too much. I might even scratch this pumpkin all together, but I thought it'd be a cool idea to show you some different ideas that you can do. I'm going to get a different brush. I'm going to grab a new one as I just kept caking the paint on there. And then I'm going to do yellow and blue mixed together for green. And I'm just going to do some pumpkin vines, pumpkin leaves. You can swirl them, have them come off the canvas. Make, I'm keeping them kind of bright like in front of the pumpkin. 
But as you go back, um, I'm not going to make it as bright. I'm going to add some black in here. It's not going to be perfect. You can even just like do little splotches here and there as a suggestion of leaves and all that. There we go. I'm going to add some more dark to my pumpkin. So I want the main focus to be on him, not these guys. Yeah, pumpkins have the little divot on the top. You could put a little hole in there and you can have a stem come out. And I'm going to add some more colored leaves. I think that'll do the trick. So I'm just going to do a little bit of brown. A little bit of like a red and black mixed together. And a little more emphasis on the glow on the ground. So I'm going to brighten this up a little bit more. Just here. Like where the lantern is and stuff. I'm going to rinse my brush a little bit, fade it in just a smidge because I made it a little bit too much. And we are just about done. I'm going to zoom out so you can see what it looks like. And like I said, if you don't like how it looks, you can add more black in and darken it up. And there we have it. We have our nice little pumpkin king here. So the very last step would be, if you want to add a little extra detail, this is the last chance that you'll get. And then we'll be done. We're just going to take some bright yellow. And if there's any detail that you really want to brighten up, for example, I want to add some more of my yellow. And my eyes really make them pop a little bit more into my lantern. May add just a smidge more highlight. And make that a little bit longer. And I'm done. And you can sign your name with your little tiny detail brush. So I hope you guys loved the painting. I thought it was a ton of fun. I know this was a little bit of a long one, but trust me, those little details really just make the painting and it really goes a long way. So I'm really happy you painted this with me. I would love to hear how you liked it in the comments below. And until next time, you guys, I can't wait to paint with you again. I'd love to see your spin on it. If you want to add some more details or if you change it up, change up your colors. I do have a Facebook group where you can um, post your pictures. I would love to see. But there we have it. We have our really cool Halloween guy. He's pretty, pretty neat. And a little bit more glow here. And we are done. Thank you so much for painting with me, you guys. I will see you guys soon.